Well, would you look at that right there. Look at this trigger right here. Beautimus. What's up, my favorite PewTubers? Holy cow, guys, it is a new gun kind of week. I think we've got six new guns this week. Crazy stuff, I know. Um, quick sneak peek, Lock 19, Gen 5, MOS. I don't know which video is publishing first. I don't remember if this one's publishing or this one. I'm gonna be out of town, which is why I'm getting these videos done, and then I'm just gonna have to schedule them to auto-publish. So I don't know which one's going up first, but if you're watching this video, check my channel, either right now or in a day or two, and you will see the Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS video. So as you know, we got the 509 Tactical. I actually bought this gun. So why did I get the 509 Tactical? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Back in February of this year, Loki Tactical said, dude, I got a FN 509 with your name on it. And I was like, sweet. He's like, I just wanted to say thank you for everything you've done, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna send you one. That was February. And so, you know, I was all amped up. And then Apex Tactical, which for those of you who don't know, they're local to me. They said, hey, we got that 509 trigger coming out. And it's like August, September, somewhere in there. And I'm like, I don't have an FN yet. So I was hitting up Loki and I was like, dude, hey, uh, don't mean to rush you, uh, but are you gonna be sending that FN 509? I didn't hear anything back for like a week or two. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy the FN 509 Tactical. And then the day that this one arrived, the Loki Tactical one arrived, but that's gonna be for a different video. So if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the notification button, and you can see that one. Long story longer, I picked this up, went straight to Apex. They had this event at their facility where they were announcing the new trigger and they were doing installs for people. You could buy the trigger, bring your gun in, get it installed. And they had recommended that I bring it in to have it installed. That way they can verify that everything is working correctly. Cause for those of you who don't know, Apex Tactical is probably the only trigger company that I know of who actually will drop their guns from 20 feet in the air to make sure that they're drop safe. And it's all scientific stuff. They got the super slow-mo cameras, all that crazy stuff. So I went, met a bunch of people who were actually fans of the channel. That was kind of fun. I, I'm not used to that. I, I'm sorry if I if I came off kind of strange to people. I'm not used to like people recognizing me and being like, dude, I love your stuff. I'm like, oh, cool. What's up, brother? You know, so uh, for those of you who were there and I met you, I'm sorry if I, I, I was a little weird. I just don't know how to handle that. You know what I mean? But anywho, so obviously you can see we got mods on it. Just picked up this compensator right here, which actually fits the profile of the slide. I got the Vortex Viper on here, so that's legit. We got the Apex Trigger, the Olight, but here's the greatest thing about this gun. Unlike the Glock 19 MOS, unlike the M&P Core, this one has a system so you don't need to use any Loctite on any of your screws that hold this in place. And it's a really ingenious design and it's a type of design that I think every single person who does RMR cuts or anybody who makes a modular optic slides, they need to implement that. So with all that being said, let's dive up close. Let's take a look at what all comes in the box. Let's take a look at some of the mods that I have on here. Then towards the end of the video, we're gonna be kind of talking about what I think about it. So far, quick heads up, I have not had an opportunity to go to the range. I literally drove to the desert today because it's the first day that it's actually nice enough to go shooting and that they lifted the fire restrictions. We had a little bit of rain the past few days. The road to get to where I go was completely flooded and they closed it off. So I couldn't get out there to go shoot it. I had planned to go shoot like eight new guns, but couldn't do that. So that's gonna be a separate video. But let's dive up close and let's see what all comes in this. And let's see what makes this modular optic system so much different. So here we are guys, up close with the FN 509 Tactical. I got the Vortex Viper red dot on there. I haven't shot this one in quite a while. We're, we'll talk more about this modular optics here in a second. Got the Olight Valkyrie in the Desert Storm or in the Coyote Tan, whatever color they call this, I don't know. And then I got this really cool looking compensator here. I believe I picked this one up from a company called Henry's Holsters, but I liked it because it had these little fins right here that actually make it completely flush with the slide. So that's legit. All right, so let's talk about what comes with it. Obviously the comp doesn't come with it. Obviously the red dot and this light or this trigger, it doesn't come with it either. This is the Apex Tactical FN 
509 trigger and it's Cerakoted to match it. And that's done on purpose, don't worry. If you're on YouTube, just check down in the first link in the description. It will redirect you to another page where you can find the links because YouTube doesn't like us linking to gun products. So if you're on any other video platform, watching this, all the links will be there for you. But before we talk about that trigger and all this other cool stuff, let's look at what comes with it. So right here in the box, you got 224 round magazines. This is what they look like. Boom, look at that pig. That is sexy. And then we got the flush fit magazine. Just as sexy, like that a lot. I think what's most interesting is everything else that comes with it. I, I actually got a Ziploc baggie here because I wanted to keep it all in one place, but you get all your standard instructions, what have you, and you know, you get your little lock right here. I'm just glad they didn't use an orange lock, that's cool. You also have this piece right here that I think is amazing. This is everything you need to know on which plates and which screws to use for which manufacturer of optics. So that you're right there, you can see Vortex, you got Trijicon, Burris, Leopold, all those guys. Pretty darn legit. Let's get this bad boy right here out of the way. So you get an additional flat back strap. If you don't like the hump that's in the back right here, you can most definitely just switch that out for this one. I tried it, I preferred the humped one. Also, you're gonna get a reduced power spring uh, for your recoil assembly. And this is for those of you who wanna run suppressors and maybe you can't get it to cycle, you can use that. Or when we go test it, we'll find out if it won't cycle with this compensator, we will be able to use that spring to help it cycle. I think that's actually huge. You also get a myriad of different parts, different screws, you got different plates, and then you got these little plates right here, which these, um, I'll show you in a second, they basically have a little, you have a little O-ring right here. It sits in the little circle of this, and that O-ring fits right under this black plate in the front, and that puts upward pressure on it, and you never have to use Loctite on any of your screws, which is legit because I literally got to send off. I was uh, taking these off to change the battery and I tried using one of them speed out bits and I actually just made it worse. I got to send this out and have this milled because I stripped it because I think I put too much Loctite on it. So I got to send this slide off, get that done. Um, that should be back in a few days. So that's legit that they actually came out with a system that allows it to not use Loctite. I think that's huge. Also, this little guy right here, if you don't wanna run an optic, it sits where this optic is. And it's got these two little wings right here. And these two little wings have these really nice knurled edges. And that is so it will protect your rear sight. And a lot of people were like, saying that it protects it if you drop it. And I was like, no, well, that could work, but it's mainly for racking it, doing one-handed manipulations, racking it off tables or, you know, whatever. And it will protect the tritium in the rear sight. That's what it's really for. So that's pretty cool that that is there if you don't want to run a red dot on it. So you really get a lot for your money with this gun. Now let's do take a look at this Apex trigger really fast. Let's see. Very reminiscent of the m and trigger, but here's the tip. Now, keep in mind, this trigger is a little stiff because it hasn't been fired, but here we go. Take up, break, reset, break, reset, break. Let's try that again. Take up, break. It's beautiful. I mean, look at that reset and break though. That's legit. Let's do a quick pull weight test. I think this one's pulling at around five-ish pounds, I believe. I, I'm pretty sure that that weight's gonna drop significantly when we actually put rounds through this. Five pounds on the nose. Again, five pounds on the nose. I really feel like this is gonna improve a lot after we shoot it because the OEM trigger that was in it was really, really gritty. But I've tried a 509 Tactical. Um, I got to dry fire Patrick Roberts, the one that he owns, and it was smooth as butter. So I'm thinking it just has to be broken in. And I guarantee that this thing is gonna just run like a top as soon as we can get some rounds through it. So real quick, just to compare that to a stock trigger, this is another FN 509 that I just got. This one's from Loki Tactical. We will be doing a full dedicated video on this one, but they did the stippling and the slide work in the Cerakote, but it has a stock trigger. Now, I believe that they have actually fired this one 
And the reason I say that is it has a little wear on the top of the barrel. So I'm sure that this one's been fired and the trigger is way smoother in this one than it was in this one. So let's do a, just a quick trigger weight. I'm just holding my finger here to make sure that this doesn't flip off. I'm not gonna help this trigger. So there we go. That one pulled right at six pounds. So that one was about five and a half pounds. Now let's look at the take up and reset and all that good stuff. So here's the take up. You got this hinge here instead of the blade style safety. This is more like an MP, which most people hate. Um, take up, break. All right, so there's that. You can definitely tell a huge difference from that one to that. Don't worry guys, just check in the description. You'll find links for the triggers and all this cool stuff. Let's jump up top. Let's talk about a few other things that we need to go over. Some final kind of, I guess, first impressions of this. Then we're gonna talk about different places where you can get all these parts. Then we'll wrap up this video. 